Hello, hello. We are live here with the Christian artist. This is the Christian artist honoring Christ through creativity. My name is Caleb. My name is Connor. Yo. My life, Connor. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Ta-da. Pretty tired, like last time I think. So, should be interesting. But mm-hmm. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the adrenaline, man. I'm feeling pumped. You're feeling the adrenaline of what exactly? Of of the Christian artist, man, of I didn't know that talking the to the internet generated its own adrenaline. It does. It does for okay. me, at least. Let's continue. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so what are you talking about today, Connor? Uh, if anybody's ever heard the quote, "Art disturbs the comfortable and comforts the disturbed," that is what we're going to talk about tonight. Mm-hmm. This is kind of mm-hmm. instilled by a video that my little brother Chase showed me. Our, our little brother Chase were yeah related we're brothers yeah um showed me last night of an older lady at a hospital um trying to get people to be more comfortable with their illnesses and so she invited them all to laugh at each other about their illnesses and she was like all right so I'm gonna say my name and then I'm gonna say my diagnosis and we're gonna laugh mm-hmm. she's like okay my name is Gina. Ha 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 ha! Everybody's laughing, and I was di- diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Ha 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 ha! You All right. creeped out yet? Yeah, yeah. They did Something some other like weird it. culty things too, but that was the main point of just me thinking, why is this something that people think is okay, and this is quite terrible, and uh, psychologically, if we laugh at our problems that helps us to cope with them but i think rather instead it helps us ignore them or lower lower let not lower lessen the severity of said problems and i think that kind of mindset can be quite dangerous yeah i think the emphasis should be on can be um because i do think that it definitely can um it does seem like it might be a good thing in some situations like yeah to um if something is so heavy and like terrible um to you know making light of something often helps you psychologically but i think there's a difference between um like you know making light of a bad situation to try to like you know cheer up you and the people around you and yeah like ignoring a problem and causing it to get worse by right. pretending that it's not as bad as it is right At light lessening the situation and, and trying to lighten the mood is so that the person can think clearly about said problem yeah. and then face it and make the right decision mm-hmm. not so that they can um i mean i mean ignore it uh run away yeah hide um so i just thought that was really interesting that psychologically that's what people do and uh especially in america i feel like that's the main solution to most problems is to laugh about it and mm-hmm. to laugh it off and you know oh you know life is still dandy instead of being like oh here's a problem we should fix it um and i think that just goes along with our emotionally charged world of if i don't have an emotion to you know back me up on this i'm just gonna feel down and that can't be good you know feeling down and depressed isn't good and it's like well you know emotions happen for reasons And just Mm -hmm. because you don't necessarily like the emotion does not mean that it is not there for a reason or it's not helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, So we we talked about uh, um, the whole idea of like art changes by the society around it. Um, And we were just looking up some some different articles and whatnot. And one of the quotes from uh, uh, don't remember the name. I want to say. Last name Fisher. Remember what I just said? What I just like quoted to you like two seconds before you went on stream? No. I no? actually okay. like, legitimately so, don't. <laughs> so his last name was Fisher. And uh, pretty much the quote was, if, if you are an artist and your art is truthful and you're in, well, and you're in a, uh, a decaying society, mm, if yeah, your yeah. art is truthful... Your art will also show or reveal decay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah. so that you're pointing out the problem. Um, yeah. And if art disturbs the comfortable and comforts the disturbed, 
if mm-hmm. a society is in a disturbing time, the artist's job is to comfort the disturbed. And yeah, if we, it's we the we other way around two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of just the idea of like, okay, there's a big problem. Everybody is immoral. The art is supposed to point that out. That's kind of the point of art. Art is supposed to hurt them. Yeah. And uh, we, you mentioned the quote, this all, we're all, we're talking about all this, right? I was writing, I was writing notes. Did you, did you mention that quote already? Art disturbs the, the comfortable one? and comforts the disturbed. Well, now you've ruined the delivery, but. No, I said you it like said three it. times. All right, now. I'm just making sure, just making sure, because I was writing notes. Oh, like, okay. Trying okay. to okay. come up with a few ideas for, for the topic, but, um, because, you know, we didn't really start thinking about what we were going to talk about until like 10 minutes, Seven minutes. It went on. Seven minutes before the stream, we came up with the idea. <laughs> And then I've been frantically writing down some ideas. Um, but yeah, so like the whole whole thing we're talking about, yeah, is, is that idea. It's it's when do we want art to disturb the comfortable and when do we want our art to comfort the disturbed? And how do you do that effectively? And how do you do those things effectively? Um, and it's I think, yeah, it's important to know um, what t- what kind of time period you're living in. Um, <laughs> right? Like, lots of things. Read the news. Be, Read be, the news. Be aware um, of, like, yeah, this sort of thing. And it, what, what's interesting, though, is that I, I really think that. I don't really think that we're really there yet to a really bad season in history right now. Oh, I'd say we are. Really? I don't think so. You don't think so? Nah, nah. When you look around. Um, I mean, compare it to if you if you compare it to any period of, of darkness in the last hundred years, it's nowhere near as bad. Like World War Two or World War One or like the Vietnam War. Okay, we're talking about America. Yeah. Well, that's the culture we're writing. We're, Are we're you saying that our culture, if our culture is disturbed or comfortable? No. Yes. I'm, I'm, oh, so okay. the thing we talked about two weeks ago. Was I think whole... I think our com- our culture is disturbingly comfortable. Right. Right, exactly. <laughs> so so what I am saying is that right now we are in a period of of laxity and right. comfort and um where things are pretty dandy, right? There's not actually that much bad going on yeah. in a like economic sense, not necessarily a moral sense, but yeah, in some ways a moral sense, like comparatively um, it's the idea of the difference between a time like World War II, where there was like uh, horrible, horrible atrocities being committed on a okay, massive yeah. scale. We're talking about the world, though. We're we're Americans. No, right. But that's right. the thing. Like World War II, that's what it was. Like millions of people dying, right. and Americans, and and you know, a lot of them were Americans who were in a war, right? Right. And so that's when, as we talked, we talked about two weeks ago. That's when you know a lot of superhero stuff came out. But it's the idea that yeah, right now we are not in that sort of time period. Um, the this current season of art, we don't need, at least from what I'm seeing, and I think you would agree, would agree with this. We don't need necessarily a bunch more like comedies and happy, happy go lucky feels. Oh yeah, sort yeah. of art. Uh, you right can uh, okay, oh, like we always need. You always need both I Christian guess. forms yeah. of all art, mm-hmm. but in today's culture. The comedy should be cutting. You know what I mean? Yeah. It should sure. be hoid from Stormlight Archive kind of comedy, mm-hmm. where you're still pointing out the flaws of society. It should be satire, and not like Slapstick. lighthearted. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is because yeah, we live in a time where things are pretty good, um, mm. and more laxity is happening. Right. And it's a time that we get to, we have the privilege to think about really hard questions and challenge our culture with them. Um, and, and, and our culture is ready to, to think about those hard things. Yes. Right. So. And um, also, you have to think about it locally of like the people I'm around might need some art that's blank, you know, and that's, mm. so we're not saying, you know, you cannot make slapstick comedy anymore. <laughs> And until not we say so again, not allowed. We, we're not. I mean, again, this is the thing. Like, we're what? I'm I'm 22, and you're 19. Like, what do we know about right. this? Actually, it's just like patterns that we've seen because we've, like, one wiser and older people than us have given us advice and thoughts on this in the first place. Like, they're writing excuses to people. They're they're the ones who 
brought me to this idea the idea of this concept in the first place with where different cultures and their time periods and what's going on in the, in the culture will influence the art that's made um but also just the you new know, the general patterns that i've seen in in uh, our current cultural context um but again take what take what we're saying with a grain of salt um but i guess if you're i mean if you're listening to the podcast in the first place i'm assuming that you have the wisdom to take us with a grain of salt because you <laughs> you know like <laughs> I, you can't listen to this podcast without hearing something you disagreed with so right <laughs> yeah um so what do you want to touch on first so first of all, I think I think dark humor was yeah. a, I think one of the first things we wanted to talk about mm-hmm. of um of just just the whole idea of that video of trying to comfort by I, I kind of want to say belittling the problem. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good term for it of what dark humor would be of of not taking the problem seriously in order to feel better. Mm-hmm. Um, when is that okay, and why? And in what context? Yeah, so uh, this does remind me of another episode of Writing Excuses. And again, I, I know I've suggested the podcast before, but seriously, like, if you're interested in writing at all, go listen to that podcast. So good. Um, but one of the things they were talking about, they did an episode on mental illness, or not, um, no, disabilities just in general. Right. Um, and, like, writing characters with disabilities. Um, and they were interviewing someone, uh, a writer who was blind um and basically like picking their brain like what is it like to be blind and like how can we like write better characters that are blind um that's actually i listened to that podcast and that's what gave me the idea to write um spend a winter in hell in the first place mm. because i was like oh i know things about blind people now i should write a, <laughs> i should write about a blind character um but uh it was the idea that one of the things that she mentioned um during the podcast um that i thought was really interesting is that um, she mentioned just how many jokes she and her family make about being blind, about blindness. Um, and Dan Wells, who's one of the, the co-hosts of the podcast, um, he, he mentioned that his mother has dementia. And he said it was the same way, like constantly. The, enti- the family situation was all about making fun of dementia. And, and it's not because it was like they were being horrible about it. Mm-hmm. It was because that was their life. And you make jokes about your life, right? Like something that's normal for you, that's just something that happens. You make jokes about it. And especially things that think bad things that happen when you have problems that arise in your life, you make jokes about them. That's what we as a natural, as a natural human response do to lighten the load of the problem. Um, And he said like it, like some people like coming into that situation, just like being a fly in the wall and listening to a conversation about you know them making fun of their mom's dementia like they've been like what is happening this is horrible Mm -hmm. but like right like for them it was just normal everyday life and that's how they they coped with it um so i think there's definitely a um a reason that this sort of thing can indeed be comforting in the way that maybe the person that we talked about at the beginning that kind of of mentioned about the the lady who was like laughing about the um uh the the cancer or you know whatever else she had um or parkinson's or whatever parkinson's um, well you know other people were saying they had cancer yeah, yeah, yeah. and they were laughing about that but too. like right like I'm, I'm sure that's what the person was thinking when they tried to do that right, right? like they i don't think it necessarily worked very well um because it again like it yeah. sounded like it cu- came off cultish yeah um, it was definitely cultish but it might have worked because it was cultish yeah not fair <laughs> <laughs> but it's the idea there there is a balance there um with all of these things there's a balance um right like just because we do want you know art to disturb the comfortable it doesn't mean that you want to just put you know uh, a million spiders crawling out of someone's eyeballs there just to disturb someone right, right. like that's not the point you disturb the, with the purpose yeah exactly and you comfort with a purpose um and hopefully you do both of those things well um and for the right reasons um but i think you know a, a good thing to bring up is you know uh ecclesiastes right um you know it's better to go to the to a house of mourning than it is to go to a, um, a house feast, of feasting a house of feasting um and that's not necessarily advice for literally every situation ever because again ecclesiastes proverbs those uh, those are wisdom books um so it's like this is maybe a general thing to think about um but i think it is a good thing to 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 keep in mind that like it's the idea that ignoring your problems makes them worse um and 
you can, but but that's the thing. Like you can make jokes about something. You can make light of something without ignoring it. I think that's the main mm-hmm. thing to, to to point out is there's a yeah, again there's a healthy balance there. So right, and and in the situation of this is my family and this is just normal for us. Mm-hmm. They are working on it. They are doing stuff yeah. about it. It's not but... that they were ignoring that she had dementia exactly. or that she was blind, right? Like, there right. were still things they were doing to help that be- right. make, make it better. But, yeah. Um, so, how can we do that specifically in art? Like, what when if we're being artists, when do we want to use like dark humor and um like gallows humor that sort of stuff that like um brings up very dark situations and makes light of them in an effort to comfort the disturbed or you know do that sort of thing well i would say for one in joma and cleaver series it was the point of bringing out the depravity of the main character joma and cleaver mm-hmm. of saying like pointing out the flaw of the character that they use this humor all the time to make light of things because they can't handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it, you know, obviously it can be something of a character of you're showing this character that they have a problem with taking things seriously because they just can't deal. Mm-hmm. That was John Wayne Cleaver to a T. <laughs> so that's actually an example of distru- uh, comfort or disturbing the comfortable, right? right? Like where um, you find yourself laughing along with John um, from Nine, Nine, I'm Not a Serial Killer mm-hmm. books. And, and then you realize the moment after you've laughed that you really shouldn't have laughed at that because, mm-hmm. wow, that was actually, like, super dark. And normal people don't think like that. <laughs> um, and that's because, you know, the whole Ooh. book is from uh, – the whole series is from the viewpoint of a sociopath. And a teenage sociopath. A teenage sociopath, right. And that's not a person you want to be like <laughs> right. um, in a normal sense. So um, – and the great part about that series, you don't think we're weird, is that he doesn't want to be like that. Yeah. And that's that's why that series is so good, mm-hmm. is because he knows what he's like, and he doesn't want to be like that, which is what's the Christian the, life to yeah, a T. Yeah. <laughs> what's the line in the fifth book where it's it's basically like... Um, I, I didn't like you because... Because you weren't a monster. Right. I liked, I liked you because you, because you realized you, you were a monster, monster and, and we're doing we're everything in each. Yeah. yeah. Doing everything in your power to change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I would totally butcher that quote, but well, well, you were trying to say it as I was trying to say it, yeah. and then it just fell apart. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's that's a that's a whole thing there. But um... oh, that would be one example. I mean, I would say, okay, so like narratively, it just shows what a character is. You're just using realism to show mm-hmm, what a character mm-hmm. is. But what about for the sole purpose of? I want to use dark humor as a theme and that's specifically for the reason of this character. It, it fits this character, but I want to use dark humor. Where's the morality to that? Um, and I think this is one of the things that you had just looked up in the, or you, you had just been reading in that article and we were looking up before. Did I? Um, well, it was the idea that you show the world for what it really is and you don't pull punches. Right. right? Um, like uh, i don't remember the exact quote that you had just said but something about decay um where it was like if if you if an artist in this decaying society if their art is truthful it will it will point decay. out it, yeah it will it will also it will also decay <laughs> well it won't decay yeah, but something like that it will, it will also... also show decay yeah 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 or present decay yeah 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 uh-huh and and it's the idea that like you like dark humor is a thing that exists in everyday life it's i mean it's a it's a natural human response to trauma and to bad things and so like though yeah you know there's always a balance there you don't want to make too light of a thing that if that's your if, if you don't want to go that direction and you want to um uh i don't really know where i was gonna go with that sentence um couldn't tell you. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Okay, so I mean, let's just think about it in the sense of what I mean. What what is the purpose of of dark humor besides the fact to show a character their depravity? Uh, I mean, to lighten the load of a dark thing that happened in the book for the reader, so that the reader doesn't take it so hard. Yeah. So the reader can continue the book without throwing up. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. 
right? And because it's it, as we talked about before, that's exactly what stories do. Is they're like a simulation for life, right. and so in a normal situation, that would be someone's response anyway, naturally. Yeah, it, to make a joke yeah. About it. it would be interesting of of just responses for characters in books of if that is training somebody if you if you are making your characters make correct decisions in subtle ways mm. such as how to respond to trauma mm. that might be very interesting i always think of like you know you watch a tv show and like people who just stand there and watch and you always yell at them and they're like why are you in shock mm -hmm. stop it you idiot and you know of people who then are in shock and you know snap out of it and do something about the situation you know that might be interesting of just like you know all the like the cop shows and doctor shows of yeah. like they responded immediately and saved this person's life mm -hmm. that's always interesting of just like you're training people's minds to remember sure. that this would be really stupid to stand here and mm -hmm. gawk <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh interstellar would be a classic example of that remember that when did that? Oh, when they were on, on the water wave. planet, <laughs> and the guy is just like, "Oh, look at that!" And he dies. Uh, yeah. I mean, but that, again, that's a natural human response. Yeah, no, yeah. it is, and that's why. But that's it's, what stories do, right? Exactly. They train you to respond. They, well, they, yeah, they're, it's a simulation for stressful situations that you, so you, that you can be trained to respond mm -hmm. better when this stressful situation happens to you in real life. Um, ah, there was something that you said that I wanted to, I wanted to touch on. You were talking about, um, oh, oh. So there's a there's a quote that um, uh, Howard Taylor uh, says he's one of the people on writing excuses, um, uh, where he he's he's a humorist like he writes a, a funny comic for right. a living and so he he talks about humor a lot. Um, one of the things he said is like most humor, um, we laugh because the only other response would be to cry or yeah. like scream. Um, that's most humor, right? Um, where you you make the joke and. And it, it's not it's not the the act of making the joke. It's it's uh, it's not in the act of making the joke. You have the choice to, choice to make a joke or cry. It's after the joke has been made. In a lot of situations, like with this sort of dark humor, like you have the choice whether or not to laugh at the dark joke, or just cry because wow, that was actually like a horrible situation, and I don't want to be a part of this. Um, but like we laugh because again, it's it's a it's a more um, comfortable thing psychologically to do. comforting thing to right. do and i think that's kind of a bad thing sometimes because sometimes, then yeah, it, sure. it, it forces people to not be truthful mm -hmm. uh, i'm and just it thinking forces of people like, sometimes to not be empathetic right right like if if we make light of a bad thing and this is why like rape jokes are not okay right right this is why like jokes about those sorts of hard situations where like moral evil is happening are just generally frowned upon and you probably shouldn't be going along with them because uh they train your brain to laugh, laugh at something to that, laugh at something that you should have empathy for instead yeah, that you should cry about exactly yeah. yeah and so it's 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 one of those things you have to be very careful not to not necessarily not to do something because again like this is just general advice and you have to make your own choices with the art that you make but be very aware of the sort of consequences that can come from from your humor from your humor right yeah. And I mean, from anything you write, but like, right. or, or I, I say write because I'm totally in story brain right now because I'm I'm writing a whole bunch. But um, any any form of art, right? Like like um, music and uh, and whatnot. Um, <laughs> the two the, the two, two art forms, that I know. writing and music. Yeah, <laughs> the two. Yeah. Uh, this is why we need Carly on podcast, right? Because we don't know about other art forms. What do we know? <laughs> um okay <laughs> well she draws and stuff so. oh that's true that's true that's the one art form that is like always neglected on this show because we don't draw because we neglect it paint or we, neglect I mean, it. we don't do any visual art stuff no um well i mean film but anyway um <laughs> but it's it's, Interesting. A, it's a thing to, to keep in mind you have to be aware of the the type of of what your humor is what you want your humor, humor to accomplish right and what you know what what could possibly be a consequence for using uh, for for saying something specifically um just be very aware well, one piece of general advice that has always helped me is everything should have a reason in art like nothing should just be like fat 
right? Like, it should, shouldn't just be, like, empty, like, oh, I guess I'll throw this in because it needs more words or it right. needs, I need another verse, right? Like, something should be in a piece of art because it needs to be in the piece of art. And if it doesn't, then it should go. Right. Um, and so take a long look at those sort of different things that you're... Um... Especially if you're unsure about something. Yeah. Of, like, ooh, should I say this? If you have to ask that you question, know. the answer is probably no. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, cool. Um, another thing that we wanted to talk about, another point that I kind of have written down here, is um, a quote from The Wave Kings by Brandon Sanderson, one of my favorite quotes. It says, uh, The purpose of a storyteller is not to tell you how to think, but to give you questions to think upon. Um, it's like a storyteller character that says that after he tells a story in the, in the in the book and that's one of my favorite quotes because it talks about art in one of the best and it brings out the best thing almost the best thing about art is that good art at least is that it doesn't good art does not um shove your face into a point and 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 make you be like, see, it's, isn't yeah. this right? Isn't this right. correct? It's, it's not a railroad plot so that you can yeah. prove your point. Mm -hmm. It's a real story in which it presents you the question. Hmm, maybe you should think about this yes. because of your life. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of stories. It's it, and those it should be of... convicting when it mm -hmm. needs to be convicting, um, but it should never be unrealistically convicting, to the sense where you're being told what to think. Rather than um, suggesting to the person, maybe this is right, mm -hmm. or maybe this and, is and wrong, and giving evidence for why something is right, right through the actions of characters, through the consequences of the characters face, right. stuff like that. A right? terrible example of this would be God's Not Dead, <laughs> yeah. of uh, telling people that atheism is wrong um, without realistic characters. Yeah. Um, giving their points or without very good points in general. Mm -hmm. um, and then having I mean, a dramatic yeah. emotional response. And that's why this is correct. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's an unrealistic plot in which you're forced to think something, well, I mean, which then makes you not want to think right, that the, way. The characters are straw men. Um, right. All of them are in, in that. Almost all of them are in that. Except in for that, that one Muslim Except girl. Except for the one Muslim girl. She right. She's big. pretty cool. Um, but like all of the characters are just archetypes that mm -hmm. are exists solely to make Teach a, a point. point about right. the evangelical Christianity. Oh, um, no. American Christianity. Exactly. Makes a point about. Is that what evangelical yeah. means? Evangelical Christianity is like a yeah, the American christian culture is what i'm referring to yeah um are you sure yeah. it's not just the christianity in which people evangelize it should be it's not. <laughs> um, well you learn something new every yeah, day yeah that's what the, it's a, it's a marketing term that's that's what that's what people use um okay so evangelical christian is like not lutherans not like fundamentalist uh i'm probably butchering this definition but we're not, obviously on. not catholics but it's like it's like a specific demographic like for marketing purposes and like for marketing okay, purposes. demographic purposes <laughs> yeah it, it's not helpful uh, to talk when we talk about christianity but anyway so welcome to america um, right and so each of those characters are straw men they exist primarily to prop up a point and right. that like the whole movie of god's not dead while I don't, I don't even agree. I don't even agree. I don't even agree with the point that they were trying to make, really. Mm -hmm. um, but even if I did, the story that they told was not was not Convincing. the right way to wasn't wasn't the right way to present that point. If that was the point they wanted to make, it would have been better as a like five minute video with someone just standing in front of the camera just explaining something like an argument right right like they didn't have to wrap a whole story around that because it wasn't worth it like there wasn't enough there anyway like it was literally just a, yeah. guys god is not dead <laughs> right like that was the whole thing right it was just like you know god is still alive and, and and you can't convince me that god is dead exactly and i have the religious right to believe that god is not dead and they could have gotten that point across by just saying those sentences. And a guy in front of a black black background just saying it to the camera. Or a white background. Or a blue background. Or <laughs> any, a any yellow color, background. Any color. I wouldn't yeah. recommend that one. That no? seems a little garish. Ooh. 
Um, but but right, like, so that's the point. It's um, because ultimately, good stories make you so. So a good story that has good themes in it and good questions in uh, on which to think upon. Those are the th- the questions um, that are going to actually stick with you, mm-hmm. as opposed to the like you know like the moralistic sermon where it just says you know this is the way it is and if you don't like it tough right mm-hmm. we don't we don't hold on to those as deeply and tightly as we would a story that gets right. across across the same point and, in and a way that's not heavy handed right. and gives us an emotional connection to people who are struggling with the same questions right like that it it plays on our empathy and helps us to actually understand right. something better. And here's the difference between a, a church service and a book. Okay. In a church service, you're speaking on the authority of God and saying, this is right because God says it mm-hmm. is right. And you're talking to Christians. Yeah. When you write a book, you don't know who's going to pick it up. So you have to be careful of not to assume the, mindset of your readers lest you lose their interest lest you lose your point um if you're trying to write a good story in the same way that jesus told parables you're telling a story in which somebody think has to think not not thinks about but has to think about said thing Mm -hmm. in a certain viewpoint but not telling them what to think about said viewpoint Mm -hmm. in a way that's railroaded because if you're telling a story you do not have the right you like especially if if in an abstract way you don't have the right to tell that person how to live their life because you don't know who they are and you shouldn't try to tell them how to live their life because you don't know who they are and so you can't effectively talk to somebody about a problem okay uh just uh um i I don't know if i told you this or not yet but Mm -hmm. Um, with the, the question that we sent into what podcast got, uh, got answered. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch your Snapchat. Okay. Sorry. All right. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that they ended up saying, okay, well, I probably should explain to the listeners. So we, uh, friends of ours got married and for the longest time, still haven't done it. no, we still haven't done it yet. But for the longest time we were like, we should get them a journal Bible where they can write down like little snippets after they read a certain passage and then leave it for their spouse. Mm -hmm. And then the spouse, when they pick up their Bible, if they're reading through the same book or whatever, can be like, Oh, this is what my spouse learned today. Kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I I thought it'd just be a great idea. And we both agreed that when we get married, you know, we'll give that to each other. And we get married to separate people. Right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Thank you for that specification. Um, So (laughs) now I lost my train of thought. Yeah. So, so we asked them the question of what Bible should we get them? And they were talking about that and they were like, well, I mean, we can't tell you what Bible to get because we don't know who your friends are. And they they said, okay, we've like, these are the translations that we recommend because, you know, they're scripture and not distortions. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then, and and so, so they can say that Mm -hmm. of, hey, this is obviously right. This is obviously wrong, but we Mm -hmm. don't know who your friends are. So, you know, here's some suggestions. If your friend is this, do this. If your friend is that, do that. That's the same way that stories are written because you don't know who the person is. Mm -hmm. You're suggesting things in a way that will get their attention and persuade Mm -hmm. them to change. Yeah, that's actually a really good analogy because like, I mean, that is that is what picking a Bible translation is like. Right. Right. Like ultimately, whenever you have a, um, you know, a a question about like what a specific word means and like where where it's coming from, you should go to the original languages and like figure out exactly what it's talking about. But when you're just doing your regular reading of scripture, right? Like that is a, it, there, there are different translations that work better for your mind than right. another person. Like for me, the ESV is like perfect because that is the, my brain is on that wavelength. It has the right amount of like a dynamic to it, uh, dynamism to it that like um, captures my imagination, but it's also clear and concise. Um, and like, you know, the NASB, for example, is, um, has less dynamism, has less like Im- imagination to it. It's a, more of a direct literal translation, which doesn't, it doesn't help me read it better. Right. It might help with like, cross referencing translations and stuff like that will help me understand a specific passage better. If I don't, if there's some like confusion, 
but when I'm just doing regular reading, like ESV is away what my brain wants <laughs> right so and then you get to something where it's like the message bible where it's not scripture somebody yeah. has taken it and distorted it so that people can understand it better and yeah. in the process has destroyed its original meaning yeah i mean so and so there are parts there there are bible translations that are simply bad and you shouldn't use them so you could say this... um like the prince of egypt for example is uh the esv um and god's not dead is the message bible <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what that is, though. Uh, Passion of the Christ is obviously an SAB, then. NA NASB, not NSAB. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. N NASB. Yeah. I mean, mm, I think it. Oof. See, that's the thing, though. There are there are a few things in in Passion of the Christ that are just a little weird. Oh, that's true. So I feel like it needs but, to but be. But like... they're all they're all for a a specific scriptural reason. They're just not necessarily one hundred percent true. They're just like interesting. Right. So points I'm trying of... to think of what would be a better. Right. <laughs> Um, no, I got nothing for that. Yeah, I don't know. This is analogy is probably going too far. Yeah. Um, but right, like that's the and, and another thing to point out about this whole whole topic too is that, um, that's the way Jesus told stories. Right. When you look at a parable, did Jesus ever say when he was telling the story? Like, obviously, he explained it to his disciples later. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what the story meant. But like, that's what a storyteller does anyway half the time to like if he, if he was having a conversation with his friends about the book that he, he mm -hmm. just wrote like or like, somebody who read it and wanted to know right and you'd be like exactly. oh, yeah, this is kind of what i was thinking when i read, wrote it and what my thoughts were um like that's what jesus did but when he told the story it was a story mm -hmm. and it had questions upon which to think but he didn't come right out and say this is what this means and if you mm -hmm. don't follow it if you don't follow my teaching like this way then you know you're just all going to hell you know, like, that's not the way that he, he... He captured people's imaginations with the way that he told stories. And also told stories in such a way that if you didn't understand Scripture well enough and, and weren't really truly seeking after Christ, you wouldn't get it because it, you know, and there were deeper spiritual things happening. And obviously, we don't necessarily do that, um, you know, in the same, you know, straight way of Jesus because we're not God and we don't maybe have the finely tuned ability to tell a perfect story that only right. that only believers will understand and non-believers won't right mm -hmm. even though that's what jesus did but but we can still take like the general concept of make a story that has underlying themes that are really important and really christ-centered when you get down to them but make it so that only the people who are truly seeking after christ will find those things there yeah and the and, people and it, who don't yeah. will sense something there and maybe it will you know, the Holy Spirit will do something in their hearts, but they won't really get it. And maybe until way later down the road when hopefully they are a Christian and they can come right. back to that and, and be like, Oh, yeah. these are the themes present. And then they came from the Bible. So, and, and the point of that is, is because Jesus is truly the only seeker. All right. And pe people yeah. aren't seeking after God. No one seeks after God. Romans three eleven. Christ is the one that seeks them first. Mm -hmm and draws them first and that's why so if we're if we're concerned about oh you know if i write this book or i write this song i need every non-believer to then convert after they listen to it because this is very important mm -hmm. and although that is well meaning duh although that is mean although that means well i think it is very harmful to the idea because we don't have to worry about whether or not this person is going to be saved mm -hmm. in the sense that I have to make sure this person is saved by the end of this book. Yeah. What you're doing is you should plant a seed and suggest something yep. and point them towards Christ with your art, whether it's subtle or maybe a little bit more solid or forward. Mm -hmm. But the point is not to make somebody believe something. It's to point them in the right direction because if mm -hmm. they're not saved, they're not going to understand it. Uh, First Corinthians one eighteen for the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are saved, it is the power of God. Mm -hmm. So people who hate God won't get it anyway. Right. right? So so give so, them a moral meaning that they yeah. will understand, rather than throwing something in their face that they absolutely know that they hate. Yeah. And will re immediately reject. Yeah. Right. Art is a way, especially like you can use different art forms to reach people that would never walk into a church mm -hmm. and get them to think about godly things and get them to, qu to ask to questions. Think. Yes. Yep. And once they start asking questions, that 
I mean, not to say that that is the person who wrote the book, but that could be the working of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. of, okay, now this is where we're going to go with this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's it's the idea that like you do everything to the ex- do everything to the glory of God, do everything mm-hmm. with excellence, and God will use that. Mm-hmm. Right, like that's, and so ultimately your job is to do things with excellence, and God will work out the details. Um, and you know, one of the cool things about like storytelling as a as an art form, because I know you know that's not necessarily always what we're what we're doing when we're talking about art, but um, is that we have like a direct example um in jesus as mm-hmm. to this is how a story is told <laughs> right and, so. and because jesus used stories so much mm-hmm. it shows you that jesus understood the human brain yeah. <laughs> yeah. and that socially speaking like this is how you get a point across mm-hmm. to people and stories this change is, societies yeah. this is how you get people to really dwell on something right i mean and like okay you think about any and i think we talked about this a couple weeks ago but you, you think about like what like what you think about affects your day it affects you know so many different parts of you of what you're dwelling on and so the shows that you watch the books that you read the 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 uh music that you listen to is affecting your mind in some way and that's a scriptural um mm-hmm. what's the word that's a scriptural uh principle. principle the scriptural principle of what you dwell upon affects how you act Mm -hmm. and uh you know like that's why scripture says to meditate on things that are good and holy and Mm -hmm. true and where are you going to find things that are good and holy and true one place the bible so meditate on scripture Mm -hmm. right and so if we're going to talk about stories and whatnot the stories that we should make should be things that are true and good and holy things that people Mm -hmm. can meditate on and be following scripture for Mm -hmm. doing so lest you become a stumbling block right (laughs) <laughs> yeah and, and it's the idea right like even though you know some people have made the argument and maybe we'll just continue to make the argument that like you know you shouldn't even be um uh, whoa, sorry you shouldn't even, <laughs> what are you doing i was trying to check the drop frames because I, I noticed that it went up a little bit oh okay um one of the things that like people will continue to claim is like you know we don't even want to engage with art whatsoever. Right. Like, don't engage with the culture whatsoever. Just, just, it's just the Bible. You know, like, right. that's all you need. Just read the Bible. And, and obviously, yes, of course. Like, technically, yes, the Bible is all that you need. Like, in terms of like reading. Like, if right. you just read the Bible, that was the only thing you ever read. You'd be good. Yeah, you'd be fine. okay. Yeah. Right. Like, um. But there's nothing wrong with and off and often it can be a very God honoring and glorifying thing to visit many good books. Right right um charles spurgeon visit many good books but live in the bible exactly yep um and uh yeah like that's that's something that um is really really important um obviously the most important thing about that quote is to live in the bible Mm -hmm. but as in like everything right like um i know you i know we've we've either we've talked about this before or if you're a christian and have been a part of christian culture for any length of time you've probably (laughs) heard this before the idea that like you know god is not a slice of the pie of your life right he is the pie and every slice in in it is you know god bleeding into it right like this aspect of your life has god at the center of it this other aspect of your life has god at the center of it the same the same should be for the way we we um consume and create art is God should be at the center of that, which means that even if you aren't reading the Bible and, you know, doing the thing that's technically better, right, it can still be good and uh, God-honoring and glorifying and a very good um, and healthy use of your time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, Sarah Cavasia once described it as boxes. of You box up your life and, like, this box is for school and I have all of this, this box is for you know, work and this box is for my relationships and this box is for God. And it's no, everything should be in one box. And that entire box is about God. Mm-hmm. That box is labeled God and it has everything that, mm-hmm. that happens. God right is inside. written all over it. Yeah. <laughs> God, God, like all the different names for God too. It's oh, like yeah. Prince of Peace. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know? Just to be, just to be extra holy. Adonai, yeah. Yahweh, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, another thing I have written down here that I didn't, I just kind of wrote down, I, I didn't talk to you about, was that, um, <laughs> like, when we're talking about art disturbs the comfortable and comforts the disturbed, I think when we're talking about disturbing the comfortable in that sense, 
um given the, and we, we kind of touched on this so far a little bit in the podcast so far but um the idea that to disturb the comfortable like there are things that you care about as an artist i i promise you you know you you know the things that you care about right uh your and that's with everybody it's like not... soapboxes right? right like the things that you really are passionate about the areas of life that you really um are concerned about like socially and you know with justice and right. um like different you know either, yeah, different injustices happening in the world or whatever like you'll have that thing that you really care about use that right um to disturb the comfortable right. Right? One one thing I would like to point out though is mm-hmm. is the reason that you have a problem with something should be because of your Christian worldview, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and that's one thing that a friend of mine had been talking about recently of just thinking through things that we stand on and being like, okay, is this biblical or we were just raised this way yeah. and never thought about it because we were taught that this is the right thing to do, mm-hmm. and really rethinking of oh. Uh, this doesn't really have any biblical standpoint at all. I have no Bible for this. Right. And and I'm not talking about that. Obviously, right. we, we do need to, to, to consider those. But I'm, I'm talking about, like, the, the ways that God has wired each of us individually and specifically, right? Like First Corinthians be, 12. Right. There will be different areas for which not, not only will we have different gifts and talents in the way that, like, the different art forms that we are good at, but also we have um, different interests and passions, you know, morally and um, socially and whatnot that, like, god will use and has wired into us um because you know we're the kind of people who can talk about that thing right like so um i'm trying to think of of an example of a person we know or because i don't, I don't want to just like use us as an example here of people caring about things yeah someone who like cares a, a lot about okay so like rebecca reese our friend rebecca reese right um, she, uh, her, her sister is deaf and, uh, for the, you know, for the longest time, she's been super passionate about reaching, um, deaf culture. Um, and that is the thing, like, I, she's not super involved in, in, uh, like art forms necessarily, except for if she can't make an awesome cupcakes, oh, um, yeah. which I do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but right, 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 like if we're talking about like storytelling or, or music or, you know, stuff like that, um, like that's the sort of passion that like is super, um, useful and important when art is concerned right like those sorts of passions where you're like i really care about deaf people be, you know um uh being reached with the gospel like that sort of thing right that is the thing that you can take your art and be like all right how can i disturb some comfortable people with mm-hmm. this thing right you can be like hey guys listen up there's an entire culture here that is not being reached by the gospel mm-hmm. and that's not okay right. right that's the sort of stuff that really um not only like is important in art already but like is very useful in um making art better right having that those themes and stuff that are not only there because like oh okay god i'll put in that theme about you know you know pro-life and you know you know all the the good christian stuff you know but but rather like find one of those things that like you are super passionate about and be like i want this book or this song or whatever to be about this thing because there are some comfortable people who need to be disturbed about this thing. Right. Right. Um, and that's the thing that I've been thinking about lately that I think is, is important to this topic. Yeah. So. And, and it's, and it, it just like Rebecca Reese, it's, it should be people that aren't artists as well. Mm. And that should reflect in the art that they consume of I'm looking for art that will prove this point or tell mm-hmm. this point in an interesting way so that I can share it with people yeah. and help me, or, or even just to solidify my mind in it. You ever, you ever like, like been thinking? And this happens to me all of the time. Where like I think about something, and like, I or I'm convicted about something, and I'm like, okay, all I'm right, I need to make this it. change. No, you're not. Well, <laughs> kidding. And 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 then like I hear a sermon on it, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, okay, this just affirmed everything I was just thinking. Mm-hmm. Or like even especially like when there are. Uh, like sermons about a different topic but then they mention the verse that i've been thinking about a lot and they just hit it on the head exactly how i would had been thinking about it and it's like oh yeah that guy right there you know and it's it's the same thing with like i'm super passionate about seeing the deaf look a little awkward on the camera okay (laughs) seeing seeing deaf people um you know come to christ and so oh my goodness, here's this really cool video 
talking about that idea and um i'm you know i want to promote this you know what i mean yeah so mm -hmm. and again it's important not to make the like even if you do start with that as like the the first point of like i want to make a story about deaf people right and right. like how we can reach the goth you know whatever um make sure that again at the end of the day you are not just preaching a sermon right because that's not what art is yeah um, that, that's just what a sermon is right that's what a sermon is. <laughs> exactly and if you want to do that then just preach a sermon like that's fine right. you know <laughs> but um just, you need to just do that but or just have um, a conversation with somebody right exactly and then but but if you are an artist and you want to if you know something you're, you it, care okay, about something so, you want yeah. to express it in an art form let's let's okay so morally we think this is the way to do things because this is how jesus told stories yeah but it, for the simple uh point of if you want to make effective art how you do it is not by teaching someone something as much as suggesting something yeah the purpose of a storyteller is not to tell you how to think you're not telling people you're not gonna you're not gonna start start your book and the main character is gonna get up on a, on a box and and, and be look at the and look at the camera right and say hey guys killing babies is wrong right and this here's why right, right? like that's not a story that's right. that's a monologue right. and it's not even a very good monologue right and, um, and that could, well how do you know we didn't even hear her monologue well, that was a whole monologue. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, like those things could be done in a story where somebody gives a monologue and then there's a story after that about that person giving that monologue and the consequences for it and what's going to happen and right, what's but, going like, on. The main point is we have to believe that that is what that person would do. Right. Right. Like, like we, right wanna, now, we have to believe that writing... that's a person and not you. Yes. Y yes. That also that. Um, because like, you know, like right now I'm writing, uh, I'm, re I'm going back through and rewriting my book. Um, cause I, I figured out what's wrong with it and I'm, I've been rewriting, I've been plowing through it and figuring out how to fix it. Um, and, uh, my novel is basically about, um, how communism is bad <laughs> 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 and like human liberty is an individual, like individuals have worth and, and dignity and people shouldn't be allowed to just tell them what to do. Um, they should be allowed to make their own decisions in life. Um, and, and if they make that bad decisions, there are consequences, there are consequences right? right? But right. you should allow them to make, have the, make those decisions and face those consequences. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're trying to like minutely control everybody's life is just, is wrong ultimately because again, you're, you're so being a parent is wrong then too, right? Uh, no, because they can't live without you. <laughs> like, it would be wrong to just, like, to make them go away. Uh, oh, um, boy. Oh, that's but, but anyway, but it's it's the idea that, um, that, that's, like, the point. But, like, the main character is literally a politician. Right. And so it's believable for him to actually literally have an argument with someone in a politic political setting mm -hmm. and be like here's the political reasons why this is wrong why mm -hmm. communism is bad um you know or the um fantasy analog of communism that exists right. in the setting um but i hopefully hopefully and maybe i did this horribly wrong and i'll have to fix a chapter but hopefully you believe him that that he cares about this thing right and that it's not just me caring about this thing even though i do care about this thing and hopefully that will make it better and not worse right mm -hmm. like because you can feel actual passion behind it but you don't want it to be just a monologue it should be this is a character who believes what they are saying and i care about it because this character cares about it right um because this is a real person this seems like a real person to me who was speaking about something that they care about and in the same way that human empathy helps us to hear someone speaking to some about something they care about and f and and understand them and like want to understand them because they are human and i'm right. a human too and i want to understand you because empathy is a thing right like that's that's the sort of thing that you can use to make like points that you actually do want to make and i like literally writing this book i want to make the point that communism is bad but i don't want to do it in a super heavy-handed way and, I, and at the end of the day like at the end of this book even though like it kind of starts off with like literally a, like a direct like debate about this thing i want it to be really muddy at the end like be like all right well what are like 
here's just a bunch of questions I'm going to throw at you. We've seen the consequences for some of these ideas. We haven't seen the consequences for some of these other ideas. I'm just going to pose a question to you. Is this okay? Like, is communism bad? Right? And that's the, the sort of feeling I want to have at the end of this book. And so you can think about it yourself. Right. And go look it up and be like, oh, wow, these ideas are really interesting. And I want to look up more about, like, individualism and, like, all this stuff. Um, and maybe I'm... And, com- and yeah, what, but... what's really interesting is is I could read that book and not have have any idea that it's about communism exactly and then be saying well no if if the world was socialist it would be great and then think well, wait a second isn't that exactly what happened in this book yeah and this is how it turned out for them exactly interesting right and that is literally the exact sort of reaction you want because you want them to to not read a book and be like oh man this guy wanted to write about communism mm-hmm. but be like oh wow this is an interesting story and then, oh that's man, these people are, like, having this interesting political debate and, like, wow, the city, like, seems like it's in a bad spot. I wonder what's going to happen to the people in this city. Mm-hmm. And then you get to the, yeah, you get to the end of the book and you're and you're like, oh, wow, man, this made me think about a lot of really interesting things. And, man, these characters had to deal with a lot of consequences for these decisions that they made. And then, yeah, you're going through your life and you're like, I should make this decision because the character made this decision. Mm-hmm. And, like like the, the the writer convinced me that that was the right decision to make not because again you're you're making this a thing where a person gets up on a box and tells you the reader this is the right decision mm-hmm. but that through human empathy and emotion you will understand morality <laughs> so so last point is show the world for what it is so just mm-hmm. in general just to point out what is reality and what is wrong and what is fake mm-hmm. and um that the point of an artist is to change the world and you can do that in a way that's unforeseen and you don't get the credit for it because you're asking someone to think about something and then in a way that's persuasive and then they come to the conclusion on their own and then you've changed the world by asking a question mm-hmm. and that's the point of art and it affects everyone all of the time and and it's also a reflection of what you enjoy and what you were passionate about anyway. But it's both of those things. Mm-hmm. It's I listen to this music because this is the kind of person that I am. And then I listen to this music because, uh, what's the word? I guess, I guess most people don't listen to music because they want it to change them. I guess I don't think anybody does. But do you listen to that? Yeah, I do. And yeah, I, I listen to music because yeah. it wants to change me. Interesting. I mean, I it depends on the type people, of music, though. though. I mean, yeah, right. but I, th- I feel like it makes sense for a Christian to to look at music in that way. Music in that way and be right. like, I want it. I that's the way I feel about a lot of art, actually. To that's be the honest. way I feel about all art. Yeah, that's the Christian way to think about art. Yeah. Is I want it to change me in mm-hmm. a good way, um, or and and I want it to teach me the result of bad decisions. Yep. Uh, that's why I listen to Emery all the time. Emery is literally a bad love story in yeah. which everybody made terrible mistakes. And it's like, and, and like there are lines in the songs where it's like, you know, I, I loved her and she hated me and I hate her now. And then it's the line of, oh, I really screwed up. Mm-hmm. I made this mistake. This is where I screwed up. Mm-hmm. And this was the consequence of it. And it starts out by just telling a story. And then in the middle, it says, oh, this was where I screwed up. That mm-hmm. was the problem. And then I can dwell on that and be like, oh, I guess I'll never do that. <laughs> right. And that's what's interesting about those songs, too, because I'm, I'm thinking about the ones that you mentioned, like, and, and, and memory songs and stuff. They don't pose, and this is what you should do instead. Right. Right? They never say that. They never say, and this is the mistake I made, and, you know, this is what I should have done instead, and you should probably do this, too. Right? Like, right. that's not how they approach well, it. Well, I no, it, all it, the time, it, at least. it does say... This is what I should have done, but it never says you this should what, do this. This is what you should have right. done. It says, right? I wish I would have done this because yeah. then this wouldn't have happened. Exactly. And it's a believable story in which both sides made mistakes. Mm-hmm. And then it's a, uh, oh, okay, I won't be stupid like this. <laughs> exactly. But it's, and that's the difference, right? It's, right. it's, um, then, wow, then look it at this shows person it's who empathy. made mistakes right. and how they, and how they, you know, thought about it afterwards and, and, and determined not to make the same mistake again. Like that's how people learn. <laughs> yeah, and um, and it's and, and it shows empathy by saying, "Look, I'm being real with you. This is mm-hmm. this is the 
the mistake that I made or just in a story. This is this is how this story goes, and I want you to feel bad for this person, and I want you to care about these people, and then I want you to make the right decision mm -hmm. based off of the fact that you care about this. Yeah. And so I think I think art should not be to reflect yourself because that's not necessarily a good thing because you know being stagnant is not a good place to be ever mm. right if your christian life is always growing so every aspect of art that you pursue should be because you want it to change you in a good mm. way and not to not to reflect who you are because we're not good people I understand what you're saying. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. mm -hmm. Well, I was gonna say something else, but it sounds like we're done. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, all right. Yeah, I mean, um, that's pretty much a wrap. I think we could leave it on that high right. note. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I mean, I w I think I was just gonna say like, um, well, yeah, you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Right, it's the idea that we aren't being honest if we don't portray a world that is honest. Um, right, if we're right. trying to make you read a... any Old Testament story and yeah. you're like, oh, if this was, you know, if a Christian artist told this story, right, everybody would be like, what the heck is wrong with this yeah. man? He needs help. This mm -hmm. isn't biblical. And then, like, yeah. okay, that's actually what Emery did. <laughs> Emery made an album yeah. that was all Bible stories. Mm -hmm. One of the songs is um, Joseph, like, feeling betrayed because he was like, this is this woman no longer a virgin? Like, what, what, what is going on here? My, my, my fiancé is pregnant. And him dealing with the psychological issues of oh, oh, what the okay. heck happened. I was Joseph. Old Testament Joseph. For a no, second. no, New like... Testament Joseph. And, and, I don't remember that story. And what's really funny is they were joking around like, oh, so this should be just on a christmas album now like this is <laughs> this is a christmas song yeah. just with like michael buble now yeah. right and uh there he was like Haha, no. no but um like it was it was literally just this this song about joseph being like i didn't want any of this and my wife is pregnant and i was planning on you know um like enjoying my wife and he, he even talks about like i i have been dreaming of the fact when i can bring my wife home and like be intimate with her and now i feel like she's betrayed me and like what's going on and then it's like oh god did this now i feel betrayed by god yeah. like what's going on here mm -hmm. and him just having this psychological issue of oh my goodness and then the ending of the song is um second place i find myself here um teach these hands to have fear and then uh, uh no no uh second place i find myself here um, the uppercase is yours, not mine. Teach these hands to have fear. Um, orchestrate my words and lines, but I never said that I wanted any of this. And that's mm -hmm. how it ends. And it's just, it's just a really honest story about Joseph. And if, and if you listen to like you, you play that song in any church and everybody would be like, what's going on here? <laughs> what is this guy talking about? And you're like, it's Joseph. Yeah. It's Joseph talking about his relationship with Mary and because Mary got pregnant, now that screwed everything up. Yeah. And it was like, it's just so interesting. Mm -hmm. And like, that's a story. Right. And that's the thing too. Like that is the way the Bible told that story. Yeah. Right. The Bible didn't say, you know, and then Joseph, everything was okay with Joseph. Yeah, Joseph and, was like, well, it's God. Right? Clearly. Right? No, an like, angel had to come to him and, and he was and, like, oh, okay. Right? And that's the thing. And even then it didn't say, the, the scripture didn't say that he went up to Mary and said, I totally believe you now. And like, right. everything's okay. And I'm like totally on board with this. He was right? like, like, okay, God is God. I'm going to trust exactly. him. Exactly. But there right. is struggle there. And that's because that's a human emotion. Right. And that's just the, the way that the Bible portrays those sorts right. of narratives is through the honest, just, this is how it happened. Right. Um, and if you like, like literally, if you notice the way that like Bible stories are told, usually there isn't like a thing at the end of the story where it's like, and this is what God meant by all <laughs> this, <laughs> right? Yeah. You have to infer it because yeah. it's not clear. 
Um, and, and when we say infer it, and I wanted to say this earlier, but I lost my train of thought of just, we're not saying that these are like the Bible stories are gray issues and you have to interpret it right in any way that you want in order yeah. for you to make the right decision. No, there, there is an obvious truth to all of these things. Um, and there is a obvious right and wrong thing in these stories, but God does not tell you that he mm-hmm. teaches you that. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference. Mm-hmm. He's showing you something rather than telling you, you need to do this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the reason that he does it that way, again, is because scripture is for Christians. Right. Right. And the Christians will get that because that's right. the, because scripture is written in such a way that Christians will look at it and they will understand it. You think of all the Old Testament stories where God killed everybody. Right. <laughs> and no, like seriously, I was just, just last night we were uh, doing the, uh, um, we did like a little... Uh, like what what's it called? Like the the thing we like grouped up and asked questions about Dad's lesson after youth group. Discussion we all groups? yeah discussion yeah yeah we had, we just had a little discussion or whatever where you know we were just writing down questions or yeah. whatever. And one of the very first things that came up was where we're talking that he was talking about like old Israel and stuff like mm-hmm. that and how they would always like reject God and then God would rescue them mm-hmm. and then you would dare to reject God again and then yeah. and there's just this vicious cycle and we were talking about that and um Chandler was just like he like opened up the earth and ate people. And I was like, yes, yes, God did that. And you know, you talk about that to any unbeliever and they're like, what kind of God do you worship? And it's like, well, no, you don't get it. God is good because these people are evil. (laughs) And it's just like, yeah. Right. And that's the thing. Like as, as someone is drawn to, to Christ, like the Holy spirit helps them to understand these things and to get, what is meant by these these narratives and like like understand the spiritual meaning behind the things like the people who listened to jesus parables did not get Mm -hmm. and had to you know even the disciples had to have it explained to them um because they weren't probably still like ready 100 percent to to really follow christ right Um, they're still learning as well so um Right, yeah. I mean, cool. so so I think that was the yeah the final end to mm-hmm. our discussion. Yeah, last thing, like I just wanted to point back to that quote wait, that wait, you wait. said. No, no, because the, the line that you said you're earlier. Ruin it. No, the line. That, <laughs> the, no, you're ruining it. The line that you said earlier, I think, is just a good thing to call back to. Where it was, um, uh, you said you should desire to change the world by asking a question. Right. Something, something like that, and I. Really we'll just we'll just say that's what i said but it was super cool so. um you should desire to change the world by asking a question mm-hmm. and uh we'll just do it like that and we'll post it on facebook make a cool like picture of me dancing <laughs> right with yeah it, and uh <laughs> like, it'll like go the, viral like the all the all the like desiring god quotes that they right they post right and yeah, we'll put yeah. sunglasses and, and a, a gangster hat on me and hashtag thug life it no you should desire to change mm. the world by asking a question. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's John Cena. Dun, dun. That's what I meant. Isn't that isn't that Thug Life? Isn't that always what it plays with Thug Life? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know. What usually plays with Thug Life isn't that okay? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's, that's it here. Um. Thanks, so Carly. Scotus. Carly said that she'd share that meme. <laughs> <laughs> I actually would made you a share meme. it with hashtag Thug Life? Yeah, I actually <laughs> made a meme a while back of uh, Pastor Jeff with the the, the uh, sunglasses yeah, yeah, yeah. where it said "Deal with it." Uh-huh. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. He said something in Romans or whatever. It was it was Romans yeah. nine. Oh, was it? It was it was Romans nine. It was. Yeah. You know, God saves people. Deal with it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, God, yeah, you know, God is responsible for our salvation. Um, otherwise, no one would be saved. Like, right? Right. like you, you better be thanking God for that because otherwise no one would be saved. Right. Yeah. Because um, I remember Jesse Knopp, like, saying, like, oh, man, and we need to get a thug life version. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good time. Uh, yeah. See, that it, just again, memes are an art form. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly what he was doing. He wasn't. He, he was he was asking a question, right? Do you like Pastor Jeff? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm just, <laughs> see, I'm pointing out the flaw yeah. by asking questions in our our little speech here. I see this is an art form. I'm practicing what we're just preaching, <laughs> and therefore proving wrong what we are preaching. Isn't that interesting? You can find us on Twitter <laughs> at Christ <laughs> underscore art underscore show at Facebook at facebook.com slash Christian Artist Show and at our website at Christian Artist Show dot com. Again, 
we do this every Monday. Well, mostly every Monday, <laughs> um, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, it's a good. It's a good place to be. We talk about art. We talk about Christianity. We talk hey. about the intersection of Christianity and art. And wait a second. Yeah. What? December 25th is a Monday, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I, do you think we're gonna are we gonna do Christian artists on Christmas? Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. What else we have better to do on Christmas? Spend time uh, with our family. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's what the rest of the day is for. I'm kidding. And that's true, but the, the day will be basically over by then. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll figure good. it out. So, so uh, yeah, well, we not enti- we we not we are not entirely sure about what exactly is going to be the lineup for the next several weeks in December here, um, because we don't really think about it until the day of usually. Um, but yeah <laughs> but i think next week we're going to try to um uh go through a poem written by our good friend and fan carla pinch and uh, she did a spoken word poem which was like literally super epic yeah um, yeah we and hopefully we read it and yeah, uh, yeah. We, we were we were unsure because it was poetry and we've never you were unsure oh yeah i was unsure because i never well, really you were unsure about doing it on the christian artists you mean not, because not it was poetry good, but, and we've yeah. never really it's true we we never really talked about poetry. anything of poetry it, well, <laughs> again like songwriting is poetry like that's, right that's right right, right. That anyway, yeah but um so and then then we read it and uh we're just like wow this is like literally awesome but yeah one of i was quite we, amazed we're gonna carly, see if we can get carly great. on the podcast uh, right. We haven't actually done any guest stuff with this yet. And I, I still have to figure that out. Right. It might work better if we just do like be in separate rooms. Um, because the, the, main, the big thing is like being able to hear. Right. Right. Cause we'd have to right. have, I we just know. have two pairs of headphones. I guess, I guess we could. Yeah. Um, it probably wouldn't be that difficult, but yeah, I think we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, so that should maybe be happening next week. Yeah. Also, Carly, you're still allowed to say no, even though we just talked about this in the podcast. That's true. Yeah, yeah that's she okay. can always. You could also say no. That's okay. Bail out. That's, that's totally fine. Totally cool with us. Yep, not a problem. We'll mm-hmm. just talk about your awesome poem anyway, I guess. Right. Because you wanted us to. Right. right. So. <laughs> um, but yeah. So other than that, uh, I think we're gonna get back to normal, normal Friday. Um, Friday burning wheel, which should be fun. Um, but other than that, not much going on. I've been having problems with the microphones and stuff like even right now i've had to put like this weird um filter on the microphone so that it doesn't pick up the crazy amount of static that is like coming through for some random reason and i don't know why i don't hear it um of course you don't um no it's not coming to the mic but hopefully i'll be able to figure that out soon so we can have better audio um, cause right now the audio is not like the best, so I apologize for that. Um, I'm probably just going to have to like sometime this week, just like tear apart the entire setup that I have here and like try to pinpoint what's wrong. So anyway, that's it for us. Yeah. I still don't hear it. Um, again, uh, you can find us here every Monday, twitch.tv slash Caleb powers. And other than that, you can find me doing virtually nothing <laughs> on, on calebandpowers.com my website because i don't actually do anything with that anymore that's great Caleb. I, I really should i need to get back to doing that um other than that i think we're good thanks for watching thanks for listening uh this will be out thursday normal time for the audio version and uh i think that is it goodbye what how awkward it is you have to press that button.